resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The Lord God, he is king. The Lord God, he is king. The Lord God, he is king. Oh, my mind. I must not let it go through my mind. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. No. Molly was dead to begin with. I did not believe it. Whispers in my ear. Rats. Hundreds. Thousands. Millions of rats. With eyes glowing red exactly like his. And he says, all these will I give you if you will worship me. All my faithful of the night, of the dark, you shall gnaw English bones at my wedding, and ride before me as I come to claim my own. Rats don't have no hunger goes, don't have no long running back, but like a rat. Life, life for Redfield. Master, you fulfilled your promise. I am your servant forever. <laughs> Good morning. It's Thursday, November 23rd, 2006. Happy Thanksgiving. It's uh, 6 16 a.m., according to my computer, which gets its time from Microsoft, I think. Um, I am just about to finish editing the voiceover voiceover clips from uh, Act 3 of Dracula and since they're both pretty short I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to blog about some things uh, Some of you may be wondering how I came to uh, play Dracula, Count Dracula, and I wrote a little bit about that, I think, in my previous comments, uh, how I really wanted to play von Helsing, the uh, champion and soldier of Jesus Christ, <sighs> but it didn't work out that way. Um, yeah, and in these two voiceovers, I mean, it's very, very clear that Dracula is directly mocking the words, the claims, the assertions of Jesus Christ. Um, pretty much uh, laying claim to Christ's throne, as it were. Uh, quoting Christ, but emphasizing that all the claims Christ made were actually true of him, Dracula. Uh, I don't know much about the authors. I probably could have researched that, but um, I didn't. I just uh, have a perception of the character. So, um, yeah, I was kind of fired up that I was asked to play Dracula, but um, that quarter, uh, the way UT used to do things, I don't know about today, but the way UT used to do things, they would have auditions at the beginning of every quarter, get right in the frame here, auditions at the beginning of every quarter, and 
uh, auditions for the center theater production, the main production, and for the studio theater production, usually a smaller production in a smaller theater across the hall, where Hamlet was done, actually, um, were pretty much at the same time, and uh, or one right after the other or something. And uh, everyone could audition at the beginning of the quarter or at the end of the previous quarter and um, and then have their work cut out for them or not cut out for them for that quarter. Uh, UT is on semesters now, so I don't know how it works. But in any way, anyway, um, that quarter... Um, John was directing Dracula, and uh, Jennifer was directing some other play. Can't remember the name of it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, which she had also done, but um, something about life in America or something. And uh, she wanted me to be in that production. Uh, I never worked with Jennifer, and unfortunately, I never got the chance to work with Jennifer in that capacity as under her directorship, but... Um, this would have been a good opportunity to do that and it was very tempting to accept her offering me two or three ensemble parts and taking those over uh, being rejected as von Helsing but um, I thought about it and here's how I justified it in my mind <laughs> Um, you may end up thinking it was just rationalization, but um, here's how I made the choice. Uh, I looked at the entire work, and Jennifer's piece seems to be really more about um, showing some snapshots of, of hard luck characters, um, a couple sob stories, um, some gritty life scenes and perspectives to try to get the audience to uh, take a look at some real sometimes tragic sometimes funny but but uh, a lot of it tragic things that were really happening to real people in America and then spur the audience on perhaps to do something about helping those people Perhaps uh, entertainment on one level, but but uh, definitely uh, trying to make some social commentary. I believe uh, the author, the playwright was Eric Bogosian, even though I can't remember the name of the play exactly. I think something in America or something, but um, that's to me seemed to be the the, the scope of that work. And um, a friend asked me. Uh, Aside, since I just did this and saw this, a friend asked me uh, if I was married, and uh, this actually is what's known as a purity ring. You probably can't read, and it says purity on it. Can you read that? I turn it backwards camera. So... I wear this to try to remind myself to act like I'm married as far as not being all over the place doing everything I want to do. Uh, I hope to be married soon. I've been trying to be married for over 20 years now, <laughs> but I just haven't figured it out yet. Um, Alright, so, uh, so yeah. That was my impression of the scope and purpose and, I don't know, the whole of, of that work. And in Dracula, certainly entertainment, very much uh, purposing to be entertainment. But uh, I just looked at the whole play and felt like this is one of those epic struggles, portrayal of the epic and eternal struggle. Yes, that's it. Um, it is really about the 
epic and eternal struggle between good and evil, between God and evil. And, um, and it And in the end, good wins. Jesus wins. Christ wins. God wins. And I gave that some weight. And I decided that it was really foolish and vain vain of me to try to think that I could decide what my role should be in that particular mission, in that particular story. And I thought about, well, what if the play was about Jesus? In any play or movie about Jesus, somebody has to play Satan, if you're going to include those scenes. Somebody has to play Judas. If you're going to do a movie about Moses, somebody has to play Pharaoh. So, if you're a director and you are looking, if you're a Jewish director doing something about Moses and you want to play, in, and you want someone to play Pharaoh, are you going to look for some world dictator to play Pharaoh for the sake of realism or? Or are you going, if you're a Christian doing something about Jesus, are you going to look for a Satan worshiper to play Satan? Are you going to look for perhaps an ex-convict, a uh, paroled murderer to play Judas? Probably not. Um, you're probably going to, if especially if your work has a a mission or evangelistic purpose, missionary or evangelistic purpose, you're probably going to look for a Christian or a Jew or somebody somebody who believes in the whole work, the purpose of the whole work. So, so there. <laughs> uh, I don't think John was trying to convert anyone. I think he was mainly just wanting to make a good show, but um, I'm just telling you that for me, this kind of laid out my reasons as to why I accepted the role. And I knew it was going to be rough, because to play the part believably, I would have to take a lot of that evil of the historical figure, Vladimir Dracula, and the fictional figure, Count Dracula, into me in order to be able to put it out. So my fasting and prayer schedule went kind of crazy, like on crack. My reading the Bible, everything just went into overdrive, hyper overdrive. Um, because I knew I was going to have to put in a lot of time researching Dracula and energy playing Dracula. Um, I probably read in their totality um, 17 books on Dracula, the historical Dracula, and vampires, um, historic vampires other than Dracula, real life people who drank blood leader type people who had the authority to say, okay, go down to the village and get me three versions. Drain their blood into a tub so I can take a bath in it and drink some. Um, yeah. And um, I watched probably 12 or 13 vampire movies, documentaries, every movie ever made about any fictional vampire, <laughs> starting with uh, Nostradamus. Not Nostradamus, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Nosferatu, 
And uh, yes, the bald head was inspired by Nosferatu. And uh, John gave me the green light. It was my idea to go with the bald head. It's kind of a tribute to that original portrayal of Dracula. Um, yeah, I watched them all. Blackula, Love at First Bite, Interview with a Vampire, everything. <sighs> Lots of research. And um, all the uh, all the print material I could find and all the uh, multimedia material I could find on the historical Vladimir Dracula. Hero of the Turkish Wars. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel like I was successful in portraying that evil. But, like I said, to counteract that, I was reading the Bible a lot. All those perverted passages in this play from the Bible, you know, I was rereading them in the Bible, cementing the Christ basis of them all, and uh, of them all, and, um, yeah, praying a lot. <laughs> um, my fasting, wow, it was, I would say, pretty much inhuman. Um, my metabolism is... I guess I call it borderline hypoglycemic. My blood tests have always come back negative for hypo hypoglycemia, but I for sure have passed out a few times from missing a meal. I, I'm always eating, and if I go two or three hours without eating, I start to get dizzy. But it's kind of weird. Uh, when I am fasting in the spirit, I'm fasting for God, for a Godful purpose, godly purpose. I can go a lot longer than two or three hours without eating. If I just am not thinking and I am absent minded, I miss a meal, I go, whoa, I need to eat. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> or else I will faint. But uh, when I am fasting in the Spirit, I can go a long time denying my, my flesh to strengthen my spirit. And um, haven't done that in a long time, a couple of years now, really hardcore. But uh, back then, I was gung ho for God, gung 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 ho for God. And, and uh, throughout this whole production process, I was fasting a lot. When we taped this on Sunday afternoon slash evening, late Sunday afternoon, early evening, um, I had taken in neither food nor fluid for five days since I think 6 a.m. Wednesday morning. This was a Sunday night. So um, I was just starting to feel the effects of my fast, to feel some weakness. Um, you might remember uh, when Willie faints into Dracula's arms he has to catch her, pick her up, carry her to the chaise. Um, and uh, in this video, you kind of tell it's not incredibly easy for him. But again, this is the first point at which I was feeling any weakness at all. In the matinee that afternoon and all the other performances and all the rehearsals, all of Tech Week, everything. Um, I pretty much was able to catch her, sweep her up into the air, and carry her over to the chaise almost with one arm. It was very, very effortless. And also, uh, you'll notice uh, the leap when uh, he walks in and catches Helga about to initiate Gordon. Um, there's a couple stutter steps there before the leap, and then a couple of steps, I think, before he actually grabs her upon landing. Um, Again, I was feeling a little bit of weakness, um, but that afternoon at the matinee and at all the other performances, all the rehearsals, everything, that was one leap. I was pretty much able to cover the room, um, the stage, uh, 
one step into the doorway, pivot, no more steps, just take off from there, and then plant that landing right next to her. Badoom, land. Yeah. <sighs> but, oh well. Um, yeah, so, let's see, fasting, praying, why I did it, um, hmm, yeah, in the end, Jesus won, that's the point for me, and also, I knew this would be a great platform, because I know that vampires, and especially Count Dracula, have a, a very large cult following, pretty much a society, a subculture, a culture, um, of people that are fascinated with, uh, uh, intrigued by, enamored of Dracula and vampires. And I knew that they were probably going to come out in droves to see this, especially with that midnight performance. Um, and I knew this would be a great platform for my ministry. And uh, I decided to use it for that. So, wow, 19 minutes already. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is going to be about 23, 24 minutes long. Maybe 25 by the time it's all over. But you don't have to watch it. <laughs> you can just look at the clips. Um, John said that we could write whatever we wanted in our bios. Uh, the bios that went in the program. And, um, and again... My main purpose in life at that point was to minister for Jesus. So I told him I just wanted to use a uh, passage of scripture that I felt like described me and my life, perhaps my work, perhaps my work in this play, and I feel like describes life in general and people in general, maybe just Christians in general, but... I'm going to read it for you now. This was my bio from uh, In the Passion of Dracula. It's what people read when they opened the program and looked at my picture. And it comes from uh, Romans 7 and 8. And I think it kind of sums up what I was doing there and why I'm here and what's going on. I'm going to read from uh, 715 through 82, but there's some stuff in here that's repetitive, and the repetitive stuff I remember I cut out because I don't want my bio to be too long, but I'm going to go ahead and read it all here. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body. Wa waging war against the law of my mind 
and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. That was my testimony to everyone who came to see that play or who read that program. Maybe they didn't come see the play, but just found a discarded program in the hallway. But that was my testimony to them back then. And that's my testimony today to everyone watching this. Ooh, yeah. 24 minutes and 29, 30, 31. Sorry. Have a super blessed, great day. If you happen to see this today, happy Thanksgiving. Have a great time with your family. Whenever you see this, um, God bless you. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.